And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. It began exactly where it was to finally end up, on 10th Street in the living room of Denise Clark's home, where right at this moment, Gerald Marsh hadn't any inkling of what Denise was about to say to him. Neither did her mother, or she might even have lingered with a couple long enough to help explain. Soften the blow for Gerald. Well, I'm going to leave you young people alone now. Denise, can you spare Gerald's flowers long enough for me to put them in water? Go ahead, Mother. My, so... Pretty. If you really wouldn't mind, I'd even like to take them next door and let Mrs. Adamson see what a popular daughter I have. Please do, Mrs. Clark. Anything. Ah, to be young again. You'll know what I mean once you're married, Denise. It's wonderful to be alone with you, even though you know how much I enjoy your mother's company. Gerald. Yes? I don't quite know how to say this. So I'm going to come right to the point. I wish you hadn't brought the flowers. I've told you before. Of course, I know. I should save my money for the future. But Denise, when a man loves someone as much Please, as... Please, Gerald. Gerald, I don't love you. I never did. I've always thought you were one of the nicest persons I've ever known. But ever since the other night when you asked me to marry you, well, it sort of brought everything into focus, and frankly, it helped me to make up my own mind. I know maybe it doesn't sound right, but I went ahead and I asked Bob how he felt. Well, it hit him just as suddenly, but he felt the same way. And... Gerald, I don't want to hurt you, but I don't love you, and I do love him, and he and I are getting married right away. I am sorry. Bob, I... I heard you mention him, but... Bob Crandall. He lives in Hartford. He and his parents are coming down next week. It'd be a simple wedding. Just family. I understand. Do you? Do you really, Gerald? I hope so. You know how I feel about you as a friend. Yes. As a friend. Well, I guess I'd better be running along. Well, Mother's expecting you to stay for dinner. Uh, no. Uh, I'll tell her I, uh... I'm not feeling very well. Uh, you? Gerald. Three days and 
three nights of thinking it over have convinced you, haven't they, Gerald? Made it clear that whatever purpose there was in life, it's gone now. And finally, your mind is made up to something else. Something you've decided is the only way. Yes, sir, what'll it be? Uh, do you have any soft drinks? No, what kind? We got cream, strawberry, uh, root beer. It, it, it doesn't matter, any kind. Uh, how much? Dime. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take it with me. A nickel extra, then. Deposit. Thanks. Hey, uh, by the way, uh, my doctor gave me some sleeping medicine. Uh, said I should take it with water. Is this all right? I don't see why not. Tell me, is there an all-night movie around here? Sure, down about a half a block on the other side of the street. Gangster picture. Pretty good, too. Kind of like what that Stephen West writes about in the papers. Thanks. Yes, Gerald. That's the way it began. With a word from Denise that sent your world toppling. With a three-day nightmare that ended in a decision to take your own life in the warm comfort of a movie theater. But now, though you hadn't intended to pay any attention to the picture, you find yourself strangely interested. Where's Ruby? Outside. She's heard about it? Yeah, she's taking it pretty tough. She really loved the guy. Never mind. How'd it go? They picked him up three miles out of town. Any slips? No slips. That's why this job cost you five grand. Say, you must be nuts about this doll to put up that kind of dough just to get her boyfriend out of the way. Shut up. You've done your job, been paid for it. Now beat it. A strange, wild excitement begins to build within you, doesn't it, Gerald? Yes. The movie hero had a rival, too, didn't he? Just like you. But he found a way to solve the problem. And suddenly a fantastic thing happens, doesn't it? I'm sorry, dear. Very sorry. Believe me, I know very well how much you cared for Bob. But these things will happen. You just got mixed up with the wrong crowd. But he wasn't that kind. You said yourself you knew very little about him. The police claimed it was a gangster killing. I can't believe it. I can't. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now, dear. I'm going to stand by you. Oh, Gerald. I don't know what I'd do without you. You sit fascinated. Watch the rest of the story unfold. See yourself as the leading man, fighting back. Winning the girl you love in the only way open to you. Yes, Gerald, the only way, a hired murder. You're certain you've found the way to eliminate your rival, aren't you, Gerald? And it begins with a noon hour visit to a man named Stephen West, whose crusading crime column has made him the victim of gangster bullets. Well, see, you're, uh, you're Mr. Marsh, Gerald Marsh. Uh, you, you don't know me. I, I work at the Aegis Bookshop. Oh, yes, yes. Well, what can I do for you? Well, uh, don't misunderstand me. I, I don't want anything. It's just, 
As you know, I've read your articles in the paper about the ring of criminals, and uh, I admire your courage. You've done a magnificent thing. Yeah, well, from where I said it, it looks a little different. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. You came up here just to tell me I was doing a good job? I thought if you knew that there were people who were behind you... Well... Oh, wait, you... You are on the level, aren't you? Why, of course. As I say, it... Most people just can't believe it's possible. Why, if anyone came to me and told me that I could go to someone and... and give them some money to kill a man... It's possible, all right. Yeah, they've got an organization. It's like a factory that manufactures shoes or bottle tops. Only this organization manufactures murders. You mean that uh, just anyone can order a, a murder? Hmm, the right kind of a customer, kid. The right kind? Yeah, someone they know is safe. Someone like you, for instance. Well, then the only way to get any evidence against them is for someone... someone for, like me, for instance, to go to them and... To go to them and buy a murder? Why not? Wait a minute. Are you offering to help me? Look, you don't understand. These boys play rough. They'd as soon shoot you as look at you. I'll take that chance. You just tell me where to go and who to see. Oh, now forget it. But I'd be perfect for the job. You said so yourself. They wouldn't suspect me. No, no. I said forget it. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm a little tired right now. Uh, maybe you better run along, huh? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, no. No, you haven't. Thanks for dropping in. Well, goodbye, Mr. West. So long. Aegis Bookshop, Mr. Marsh. Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. West. I've been thinking it over, Mr. Marsh, uh, Gerald. I've changed my mind. I was just wondering if uh, you'd changed yours by any chance. Oh, no, 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 Mr. West. Uh... Okay, Gerald, you asked for it. Now, here's the dope. Uh, just, just a minute, Mr. West. All right, Mr. West, I'm listening. The elite barber shop. You, you think that's the front? Yes, yes, I see. Ask for... Oh, oh, say that... that Tommy Royce sent me. Say there's someone I hate. Someone in my way. mind my saying so, Mr. Marsh. This seems kind of silly. What's that? Cutting your hair again today. I just cut it yesterday afternoon. Of course, I can use the business, but... I know it seems funny. I just wanted to talk to you again. What about? That fellow I told you about yesterday. The, uh, guy that's getting in your hair? Why are you telling me? I thought maybe you might be able to do something about it. Where'd you get that idea? Tommy Royce told me. Royce is out of town. I talked to him before he left. Look, you can check on me. We did. Your name is Gerald Marsh. You live at 1270 Atlantic Place. You work at the Aegis Bookshop. 
the Peerless Bookshop in St. Louis before you came out here to live. How'd you know all that? I just said, we checked on you. Well, were you satisfied then? Maybe. There's a pawn shop, Mr. Marsh. 314 Walton Street, other side of town. Why don't you drop in there one of these days? The man who runs it specializes in antique guns. Tell him you're a collector. That you're after a rare one. A dueling pistol called Branca Luigi. I'll just look around, thanks. Uh, you sell guns? We sell everything you see, friend. Uh, I'm thinking of a certain type of weapon, an, an old make dueling pistol, a Branca Luigi. A Branca Luigi, eh? Yeah? No, I don't think I can help you, mister. But a friend of mine suggested that I try this place, a, a friend from the elite barber shop. Oh, I see. Well, perhaps if you wanted to leave your order for a Branca Luigi. I would, yes. They come high, you know. How, how high? One thousand dollars down with your order. Another thousand on delivery. I see. And when could you deliver? That's a date we never give out, friend. Too many uncertainties. Who gets the package? I'll let you know that later. Shall I bring the money here? That won't be necessary. This is an outside transaction. Just mail the cash to Post Office Box 228. I'll go to the bank in the morning and pick up the money. Fine. I'm sure you'll be more than satisfied with our service. I didn't expect you this early. I know. I'm on my way downtown. I thought I'd drop in and explain. Explain? Well, this morning when you phoned and asked me to have lunch with you, I'd forgotten I'd already promised to go shopping with Edith. Oh, I see. Well, I did want to talk to you. I really can't call it off, Gerald. You do understand. You're a good friend. A good friend? Denise, you know it's much more than that. You know how much I care for you. Gerald, please. You've got to give me a chance. You know I'll do anything to make you happy. Gerald, we've already been through all this. I've told you I love Bob. Well, let's don't spoil what's left. Denise, you don't know what you're doing. Gerald, I know you're hurt. But you'll get over it. There'll be someone else. No, no, no. There won't be anyone else. Gerald. It's, it's all right. I guess there's no use talking about it anymore. No, I guess there isn't. Bob's arriving in town Wednesday, and we're going to be married next weekend. I see. Well, bye, Gerald. Bye. Hello. This is the the customer who asked about the Branca Luigi pistol last night. I'm sending you the money. That's fine. Now, who's to receive the order? Crandall. Bob Crandall, I got it. B. 
Be arriving in town Wednesday. Now, how will we know him? He'll be keeping company with a young lady, a Miss Denise Clark. She lives at 1119 10th Street. It's been three days now, hasn't it, Gerald? Three tense, anxious days since you mailed the money. Ordered yourself a murder. The waiting hasn't been pleasant, has it? But you can't call on Denise, can you? Because it wouldn't do to be seen with her until it's all over. Hello? Gerald, I'm so glad I could reach you. I went up to your apartment, but you weren't there. I had some work to finish up at the shop. I'm just getting ready to close up. See me, you... Uh, I hadn't planned on it. Bob's dead. He was shot. Shot? Well, that's a terrible thing, Denise. Oh, yes, of course, I understand. Well, I'll meet you in five minutes. Yes, we'll go for a little drive. And, and Denise, dear, try to get hold of yourself. Fine. Goodbye. I hardly know what to say, Denise. It all seems so unreal. I mean, you were going to marry Bob, and now... I know. I can't believe it myself. Gerald, the way that you've listened, been about this tonight. I suppose you want to go away for a while, rest, think things over. Yes. Of course, I'm going to stay for a few days with Bob's parents up in Hartford after the funeral. Of course, that's the only thing to do. But I'll be back, Gerald. Maybe we can pick things up where... where they were left off. You can take me back now, Gerald. I feel so much better. I'm just talking to you, being with you. I feel I can face up to life now. My life's over, too. I know. I'll drive you home, Denise. And believe me, everything's going to be all right. You'll see. For Denise Clark, it had all seemed like a terrible nightmare. And she wouldn't have consented to talk about the shooting to anyone. If there hadn't been a strange feeling that there was so much more to it. Do sit down, Mr. West. Thank you. We don't have to talk about the details. I got all those from the police. But I would like to know more about Gerald Marsh. I can't believe it. So understanding. I can still see him there on the front steps. And that car driving up. And the man getting out. The one the police captured. And it may lead to the capture of the rest of them. When Gerald started to run, he must have guessed what was coming. No, that's what I don't understand. He started to run before he even saw the man. I can't understand it. I was telling him how Bob was shot. Her fiancé, Mr. West, Bob Crandall. He was killed only a day ago. Fiancé? But I thought Gerald... Gerald, no. I'm afraid he was just, well, hopeful. Poor boy. I can't understand. He acted crazy, sort of. Turned pale. Started to run. Miss... Just how was Bob Crandall killed? It was an accident. In Hartford, where he lived. Bob was cleaning his hunting rifle and it went off. 
I see. Why should that shock Gerald so? I'm going to hold up in my story. I want to make sure. But I may have a great deal to tell you about a Gerald Marsh that none of us really knew. <laughs>